Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage, day three of Open Source Summer, winding down three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, Rob Strecce, analyzing all the data here with me. We're breaking it down, we're bringing all our best guests on. Emre Moran, co-founder and CEO of Servos, uh, hot startup, authorization, fine-grained privileges. We're going to get into it. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. Great to see you. We had a great dinner the other night uh, with other entrepreneurs out there. You guys uh, feeling good about the event? Yeah, very well, very good. It's, I mean, it's a great uh, community, open source software. And there are a lot of other companies that have open source core and then they build businesses on top of it. A lot of change happening, cloud scale, distributed computing, uh, big driver, AI coming in like a tornado as we've been saying. A lot of conditions ripe for innovation. And one of the things we've been tracking on theCUBE is super cloud, we call it. This idea of multi-cloud, multi-environment cloud operations, yeah. big part of it. Take a minute to explain what your company does. We covered some Amazon news, I want to get into that, around Cedar. Yes. You guys have some product that's similar but not the same. Indeed. Take a minute to explain your company, what you guys do, what's your product vision. Sure, um, at Servos we provide an authorization layer for software applications to be able to implement roles and permissions. What we see often is a lot of, pretty much every B2B uh, application, and even if you have a massive B2C operation, you have a back office that actually behaves like a B2B that needs to implement roles and permissions for multiple people to work together in order to complete a workflow. And often, uh, you know, right after you handle authentication and directory, who's this user, what departments they belong to, what they, roles they have, uh, all these software need to implement what permissions does this user have, what can they do and what can't they do. And traditionally, software engineers actually built that authorization layer. And for companies that don't have their own dedicated software engineering teams, maintaining that is a problem. It always takes a second seat compared to many other features. And at Servos, we provide that as an authorization layer, as a, as a microservice that you can run in your environments. All you have to do is define your policy and rules, and it gives you a very flexible API that you can use from anywhere on your stack to be able to ask a question, can this principle do this action on this resource? And it tells you yes or no, you implement that, you move on with your life and everything else. You know, I love the trend as, as the perimeter got killed with cloud, yes. you now have everything's kind of distributed access, we got to have the security and all these controls. Open source is a big driver. What's your relationship with the open source? How you guys make money? What's the commercial relationship? Yeah. Explain the, the, the dynamic there, because it's super important. Um, we believe, so one of the main reasons why we open source our product is security is at the core of every software. And as a security layer, authorization layer, you need to take servos and implement at the heart of your network. We want to make sure that it's secure, that is transparent to developers who want to implement it. Um, another main reason why uh, Servos is open source because we want to make sure that every developer who has a tendency to say, oh, I can build that, <laughs> shouldn't. <laughs> and security is one of those things like crypto. Nobody should be writing their own algorithms. So we believe security should live up to those standards as well. And we want to make sure that developers feel very comfortable looking at the code, understanding what it is, and therefore not be tempted into writing their own uh, authorization. And how do you guys make money real quick, what's the business model? So the business model is for developers who actually have the tendency, oh I can do that, I can run that, we give an open core library that's Apache 2 license that mm -hmm. they can implement and move on with their life. And we very recently announced Servos Cloud, which is a control plane for, the, for, for that binary or for the uh, Kubernetes process that they're running in their environment to be able to manage that. So if the role, if you know, you need to do to handle DevOps to be able to handle uh, distribution of policies, that's part of our open source, uh, sorry, premium offering. But right. if developer wants to do it themselves, they can do that. Similarly, if you want to write, listen to your product manager and, li mm -hmm. and convert those requirements into a YAML policy, developer wants to do that, it's free. If you want a WYSIWYG interface for your product manager to get off your back as a developer and let them do get on with their roles, that's premium. And similarly, we have an offering for the security teams and CISOs to be able to handle and interact with logs. So pretty straightforward open yes. source model. Yeah, and it seems like it makes it easier for somebody because uh, you provide the control plane yes. to then go and scale their applications Absolutely. as well. And Absolutely. I, I would assume that is part of that also making sure, I mean, because security and yes. all of that, the auth uh, looking at it from 
uh, platform engineering perspective and making yeah. sure that it's part of the SBOM and it's yeah. part of all of that. Uh, well, we with well. the premium solution, we make scaling and operations of it uh, yeah. simpler. So if the moment the role gets out of a developer and becomes a DevOps, yep. we want to provide all the tooling so a regular developer shouldn't actually deal with it and we can actually provide all of that. Uh, we very much so focus on developer experience because we, what we see is a lot of shift left, mm -hmm. right? Developers yes. now need to handle the security and authorization and various other things. We want to make their lives easier, but by providing these tools, we're act ultimately they need to actually now manage an additional system, and we want to actually take that away from them and do that in our cloud hosting, cloud hosted control plane. You know, we covered this week uh, on the first day, uh, Amazon had news, they open sourcing Cedar, which is, they say fine grain permissions, it's their thing. Yes. Is that similar to what you guys do, or is that just Amazon? What's the difference? How do you guys compare to say yeah. that? Um, it's similar, in fact, that so Cedar, what Amazon open source is a Cedar language, the policy language, and being able to write policy and convert that. But then, whatever that policy is, it needs to actually run on what's called a PDP, policy decision point, that actually needs to make these decisions and interact with your software. So Cerberus is very similar. We have a very simple language, similar to Cedar, but we actually even tried to make it simpler to developers by making it a YAML configuration and not a programming language. So in that regard, we are similar but different. And when it comes to running the decision point, Amazon actually runs it in their own environment, where Cerberus is a binary that you can run in your own environment, whether that's on Amazon Cloud, Google Cloud, or on-prem, so or multi -environment. even multi-environment. Multi-environment as well as air-gapped, right? You can actually run it in an air-gapped environment. We have customers running Cerberus on uh, physical ATM machines. <laughs> we have uh, some government clients running it in airtight environments. And so why do they do that? For ransomware protection? What is backup recovery? That's actually uh, their setup, right? That's the oh. setup of their environment. It's not because they're running servos, they're running that's in such an environment. It's, it's part of their environment, and that's what, right. oh, yeah. you know, prerequisite that yeah. we needed to play in. Awesome. Well, so Amazon runs only on their cloud, basically. Yes. Okay, so you're, you're set up for multi-cloud. And ev eventually, potentially, they will open that up as an API call, but there's uh, something else in authorization. Unlike authentication, authorization needs to be very fast. Authentication, when you log in, press yeah. the button, you can afford to wait 100 milliseconds <laughs> to just log in. Yeah. Once you're logged even in, you're in. Even a second is fine. <laughs> Whatever, even a know. second is fine. Yeah. But when it comes to authorization, it needs to be super fast. Authorization is behind every interaction with the website, with a website, with a product, behind every API, it's in the blocking path. So therefore, it needs to be super fast and by co-locating with the code and where this logic runs, Cerberus provides that. Amazon can afford to do that within their environment, they have low latency within their network, but the moment your application is multi-cloud, now you need to actually make that request across yeah. the network, which right. is going to start slowing you down. And that's where people real are realizing multi-cloud's hardest is latency. Absolutely. And, and what about uh, actual, the microservices themselves doing the authentication, is that part of what Cerberus does as well? So that I can have them have their role in their policy? Or is it so, really around people? So Cerberus does not handle authentication okay. or the, the user directory. Okay. So all of the, Cerberus is stateless on its own. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Cerberus only interprets your policies and by looking at the incoming request, can this user do this action on this resource, it evaluates and gives you a yes, no answer. So in fact, uh, one of the very early things that we focused on Cerberus is integration with the, our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. We integrate with every authentication provider. Okay. We have examples of how it integrates and, we, and within that all, all, also the uh, directories are part of it. Any authentication provider, any directory provider, Cerberus consumes data from that and makes that decision state in a stateless manner and returns an answer. Okay. Talk about the role of ecosystems, because you guys are a very valuable piece. You mentioned Amazon, you can work with yeah. them, multi-cloud. You have to have multiple partners, yes. environments. Yes. Talk about the ecosystem, how you guys fit in with the variety. You mentioned Okta earlier. No. Uh, do you have to play with everybody? And how does that work? How do you deal with other we need to be compatible with everybody. So when we look at a security layer of an application, the critical components are authentication, mm -hmm. which is, are you who you say you are? Can you log in? Are you, you know, okay. uh, is, are your credentials valid? Once you're logged in, it's the directory. 
who are you? What are your roles? What, dire what departments do you belong to? What geographies do you belong to? Once you know those two pieces of information, then comes authorization, which is, are you allowed to do that action? Are you allowed to see those records? Are you allowed to edit, uh, make that payment, edit a record? And then a fourth one of that is the logs, ultimately SEIM, yeah. like all the actions of who tried to do what, whether they were allowed or not, and why. Why were they yeah. rejected, why they were allowed. So that is the ecosystem that we're playing in. And all of that, of course, plugs into the rest of your application. Yeah. And you got to handle all the languages, SDKs, Absolutely. deployment methodologies, authors, uh, authentication. Indeed. These are all the key areas you got to thread through. Indeed. So, uh, as you put it, um, the top thing is the SDKs. We, we need to make sure, so Cerberus exposes an API, but not many developers are willing to write plugins for you know, how to you know, do a gRPC calls to us to, to be very fast. So, we actually have now SDKs in every major language, so to a developer, it looks like just like a regular function call. They can get, there, get away with it. Um, after that, we actually have um, examples or, and integrations with every major framework because we are in the process of educating developers that authorization got solved. Do not start, do not, yeah. we do got not you get covered. into it. If you, we got you covered and if you're operating in the, with these major frameworks, here is the best practice of how to integrate, how to actually use yeah. authorization. Then, as you mentioned, comes the deployments. Every, uh, all day everybody runs on the cloud, everybody's on a different stack, different architecture. How do you actually run servos in each one of those architectures? And lastly, uh, as we just mentioned, the integration with the authentication providers. Yeah, yeah and I, I would expect that, again, you know, open source is one, as we've been talking about, and proprietary is going. But there still is, especially in where you have to do your integrations, there are still some proprietary type systems that you, for uh, the actual uh, authentication portions yes. and things of that nature. Do you, do you find that uh, those folks are embracing uh, Servos and from? The, the we, we try to decouple this as much as possible. The, mm -hmm. the, our very original message was authorization got decoupled. How do you decouple authorization right. so that it's out of your business logic and it operates on its own? Because uh, it is, you know, the other thing, part of the decoupling, when we looked at this landscape of who decoupled certain processes very successfully, when you actually historically look, Stripe has mm. been a great Especially one, right? Yeah. It comes, yeah. Twilio is another one, yeah. right? They took a very complex process, 75 calls, and trying to figure out what it is into a very simple API call. So when we were building servos, we looked at the world as like, what is that simple API call for us? How can we simplify all of these decisions? And that was the, can this principle do this action on this resource? That is the API call that you get to do. And as part of that, we built all the API SDKs so that no matter where you are in your application stack, you can make that call and you get a very simple answer back allow or deny. So you guys do the heavy lifting on the integration side to make it easier By for that. By simplifying the API. You do the back end heavy lifting, yeah, exactly. give that simple interface yes. function call to the framework SDK Indeed. deployment. And what we give back is that very simple decision. Yeah. Yeah. So as a developers implement that decision. Yeah. If business logic changes, you don't have to change your code, you just change your policy. It's, it's a very simple idea, but hard to execute. What's the secret sauce for you guys, speed. speed. So, what's the, what's the key? Let me go. Let me go through <laughs> yeah. um, the, the principles that we <laughs> always, you know, when we were first designing servos, what were the principles we looked at? Number one is security, right? We are in a security space. This needs to work as expected. Right after that comes two very key requirements. One is speed. The other one is uh, reliability. Your security layer is not like your A/B testing layer. If it's not working, you can default to something, yeah, right? Yeah. It needs to, <laughs> if you know, if it's it not gives, working, yeah. someone's going to get fired. So exactly. It, 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 yeah. it need, if you know, if it gives yes to every <laughs> allow answer to everything, that's as good as your doors open. <laughs> yeah. Right. And if says if it says deny to everything because it's not working, you're as good as your application is shot. So, yeah. and then the second one right there is speed. As we mentioned earlier, it's behind every blocking path of every API call. It needs to be super fast, super responsive. Right after that, the other next to design principles were uh, extensibility and scalability. 
we want to make sure that if your application is suddenly running 10,000 pods, we don't become a bottleneck. We, that's why we design servos in a very stateless manner. It runs super e efficiently and effectively with a minimum mm -hmm. footprint. And the extensibility is the core requirement where a developer says, I can do that. They write the if then else statement, they're done. But every business actually grows. Every business has to handle these additional users. And that's where the extensibility of servos comes, how you can define and design new roles and very easily deploy them. And underlying every single one of them is the uh, is developer experience. Because if, if a developer says, oh, that's too hard, all of the work that we've done doesn't matter because they're not adopting it. And authorization, as uh, we see it, is not something that a CTO can actually enforce on top of developers. Developers actually will go and find the best tool. And we wanted to make sure that it's you know, it, it's a pleasant environment yeah. to work in. It makes it really helpful for the developers. Indeed. Well, this, this fits right into our super cloud narrative because we have our event coming up on January, uh, July 18th, where we're seeing companies wanting to do more cross environment, and that's where they're putting all their creative yeah. energy. You guys provide an, a simple way to allow them to do that, not worry about authorization. It's a uniform authorization that works yeah. across everyone. It's and the danger is if someone does a one off and does it, doesn't yeah. complete it, yeah. maybe it's open to vulnerabilities, exactly. a lot of risk. Uh, it's a lot of risk, and the design that we've chose is a lot yeah. of environment. A lot of companies run. Uh, they have a lot of apps too. Microservices, <laughs> right? Yeah. And those microservices are all in different languages. Yeah. So now imagine your requirements changing, and somebody having to take that and translate it in every single language, yeah. and make sure nothing gets lost in translation. Yeah. And then once those requirements are coded. And it's also a deployment nightmare to make yeah. sure you actually coordinate each one of those. And if you've got an API, you can have a set of services exactly. that you can go to, an, if a competitor goes out of business or changes their spec, exactly. you can go to another provider. You can just provider. replace it. And, and that's, that's huge why value. That's why Servos yeah. is uh, Apache 2 license as well. Yeah. So a lot, the very first objection that we always heard, like what if you go away out of business? Yeah. I'm like, here you go, the code yeah. is I yours. Mean, no I mean, escrow, no, right. the, none of those <laughs> B2B enterprise I mean, hassles. It sounds basic, but it's really great architecture from a cloud standpoint. It's all in line with API first, decoupling, yes. highly cohesive elements. And distributed. Distributed, yeah, so you fit all those key attributes. Exactly. Which is going to be the next 10, 20 years of computer architecture, right? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on, I really appreciate it. Um, great to see you the other night at dinner. Congratulations on your success. Thank you very um, much. How many people in the company were you, are you guys in terms of funding? What's the status? Yeah, you mentioned before we came on camera, yeah. you're a virtual first yes. company. Take a minute also. to explain what you guys do, what you're, what, what so you're looking we, for, uh, and why people should, yeah. should work with you. So we announced our fundraising and launch of our Servos Cloud product about a couple of weeks ago, we raised uh, recently seven and a half million dollars from Omer's Ventures. Here we are in Canada, so that's a great <laughs> moment to <laughs> announce that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are in the process of releasing our cloud, uh, Servos Cloud Premium Service, which is a control plane mm -hmm. on top of our uh, environment to make life easier for non-technical users as well as mm -hmm. developers helping them with DevOps. Uh, we have, uh, we've been remote from day one, this was a COVID company. Uh, we uh, we started company in March 21, and in about a week and a half time, we're going to be, uh, for the first time, full company coming together. We have employees from New Zealand, yeah. uh, covering every zo uh, time zone pretty much going west. What's your vision, what's your key milestones that you want to achieve over the next 12 to 24 months? What's yeah. your goal? Do we, another round of financing or be cash flow positive? What's the, what's the, what's the key goals? We, we are, right now, uh, we, we have great traction with our open source product. We have uh, hundreds of companies using it in production. This includes like, public companies, FTSE 250 companies, uh, major um, crypto companies for their trading platform. So our product market fit is getting there, but of yeah. course we want to actually improve that over time. Yeah. And our next major milestone is success with our uh, cloud hosted control plane, which is our premium offering. We're going to be focusing on- Is that on shipping now or is that in beta? It's in private beta uh, right now. In two weeks it's going to be actually on open beta and we're going we're gonna to spend the rest of the year refining that for developers before we go on to additional users. Service Cloud Control Plane, sounds like a sustainable, differentiated position. Grow we the company. So. Congratulations, by the Thank way, great goals. Much. Be fat, be secure, be fast, decouple, make well, it easier for developers. Indeed. 
great stuff. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really Thank you very much. Okay, day three me. coverage of theCUBE here, breaking it down. Rob Treche and I just having a great time with a great view here in beautiful Vancouver. Got a great office. We'll be right back with more day three coverage as we wind down our coverage of, of, of Open Source Summit. We'll be right back.